divorce, five tips for a successful divorce process. Basically things that you can do to help ensure as best as you can that your divorce will be an amicable one, assuming that you guys are are playing fair and all that good stuff. So I have some notes here I'm going to read, and then I'm going to kind of expand on them as we go. So here's five tips for a successful divorce process that you want to be amicable. Divorce can be a challenging and emotional process, but it's possible to navigate it amicably with your spouse. You can use a service like mine, obviously. Here are five tips to help ensure a smooth and amicable divorce. Number one, open and honest communication. Maintain open and honest communication with your spouse throughout the process. Discuss your concerns, expectations, and priorities calmly and respectively. Effective communication can help both parties understand each other's needs and reach mutually agreeable solutions. One of the consultations I had today, um, I basically told her, let's not file your divorce just yet. They want to go through an amicable divorce, but they hadn't talked about any of the terms yet. And the previous discussions they had had were over two months ago, and they haven't really connected since then to discuss things. So I said, hey, I think it's better that we just, you know, kind of pump the brakes a little bit. You guys should sit down and talk about the details of the terms of your agreement related to custody, child support, spouse support, division of assets and debts, because they hadn't really talked about that. I said, that's when you'll really know if you guys are going to be amicable or not is once you guys start talking details um, and talking about money and that, you know, that's where there's maybe um, issues can arise and you realize you're not actually in agreement. Cause I told her, I don't want you to hire me and I I file your case. And then, you you know, he gets served and he he gets brought into the process and he wasn't ready for it or he wasn't, um, he wasn't, he didn't know that you were even filing. So, you, communication, not only in what you want and terms, but communication like, hey, I've talked to Tim at Divorce 661. I'm considering filing for divorce. I told her, hey, let him jump on the website, watch some of my videos, get to know me a little bit. And, and you also need to agree on a service you're going to use. Because what if, for instance, he says, you know, I don't I don't like something Tim said, so we're not. I don't want to use that company. Then good, go find a company that you guys both mutually agree to use because the worst thing you can do is both of you using separate paralegal services or having to get attorneys involved if you're trying to keep this amicable. So um, communication is key, and and that is why that is number one on my list. Number two, consider mediation. Today I did all kinds of discussion videos about mediation, but maintain, oh, I'm sorry, uh, mediation can be an effective way to resolve disputes and reach agreements outside of court. That is true. A neutral third party mediator can help facilitate productive discussions and guide you towards mutually beneficial solutions. This can be less adversarial and more cooperative approach than litigation. So I talked about um, mediation a lot today in the videos. Uh, you can see you can go back in the in, on YouTube and see them. I also talked about mediation versus litigation as well. And I would agree with this point. Mediation is definitely better than litigation. Reaching an agreement is always going to be better than going to court and going to trial and having attorneys if you can if you can prevent it. Um, but the thing about mediation is mediation is not required in California. I will have on occasion people schedule consultations with me and they'll say, Tim, we're looking for a mediator. And when I call them, I say, let me tell, talk to me about what you why you think you need a mediator. What's going on? Some people think that mediation is required in order to um, get through the divorce process and it is not. And some people think they need mediation, but in reality, they don't need a mediator. They just don't know how the process works. And so I don't consider myself as a mediator. I don't charge fees as a mediator. I do this as a, you know, as a flat fee and put you through the process. But in my consultations, and this is why I like having them, one of the reasons is I can explain the process. I can explain the decisions that have to be made. I can explain um, the terms you guys have to provide me and all the different things that need to be discussed for us to be able to finalize your divorce amicably. And in the end, they're like, you know, Tim, I don't, I didn't need uh, a mediator. Of, at the, I just needed this information you gave me. And I do that as part of a free consultation. I also do it during the process as well. And while again, I'm not a mediator, I think my role kind of bleeds into that a little bit because in our service, we use a portal where all communication is between me and you and your spouse and everyone's on the same page throughout the same process. I do updates via video. 
Um, when documents need to be signed, everyone gets a notification. When I, when I update a settlement agreement, everyone gets to review it. So I bring everyone along the process all at the same time so everyone's on the same page. I was talking yesterday about the guy who called me, um, who hired, wife hired a paralegal firm who just absolutely won't talk to them and are, are pretending to play attorneys and they, they're acting like they represent the wife and won't talk to him. And he's totally confused. He's totally lost as far as, far as what the process is. They have an agreement, but he's not. He, he thought the disclosures was the agreement. He didn't know what he had to do, what paperwork we had to do. So um, that's why I work with both spouses, both from the communication factor, right? And obviously keeping people on the same page. Number three, focus on the best interest of the children. Always want to do this. If you have children together, prioritize their well-being and best interests. Above all else, collaborate on parenting plan that promotes stability, consistency, and a healthy co-parenting relationship, showing a united front as parents can help reduce conflicts. Yesterday, um, or two days ago, we had a consultation where they had um, they had agreed outside of court, just verbally, you know, joint legal and physical custody, uh, but mom was going to have 90% of the timeshare of the of the children just because she wasn't working she was home and was able to care for them but then once the um husband realized that wow when we run the child support calculation because mom has more timeshare that means the child support goes up suddenly he wanted to have more timeshare not because he could watch the kids not because he wasn't going to have to go to work but because he was going to fight for 50 50 now because it reduced the amount of child support he had to pay that obviously is not focusing on the best interest in the children i think the best interest of the children would be if there's a stay at home mom or dad that you guys do what you can to number one, keep them being parented by the mom, by the mom or dad that's home and that you help in the way of support to make sure that their children's financial needs can be met with food and all that. Because obviously the more time you have with the kids, the longer or the more money it's going to cost to feed them buy the things that they need clothing and so forth. So again, focus on the best interests of the children is always great advice. Do not turn them into pawns or a negotiating tool. Number four, be fair and compromise. Be willing to compromise on various aspects of the divorce, including property division, assets, and financial matters. Understand that a fair resolution may not mean getting everything you want, but it can lead to a quicker and more amicable divorce process. What I'll add to that is, 50-50 50-50 is not always fair. I can I can tell you that very few, if any, of the settlement agreements I put together are the assets and debts divided equally. They're, I would say probably never. They're never divided equally. When you go through an amicable divorce, you get to make the decisions on who keeps what. If you guys are splitting up some assets and they're not ex- exactly equal, they could even be considerably off. And for one reason or another, you guys agree to those terms, and that's totally fine. The court's not going to interfere with your decision-making ability. Maybe it's because maybe uh, there's not going to be any spouse support when there there should be. Like we run a calculation, and, and it says, hey, spouse support should be $500 a month, but you guys don't want to include spouse support, for instance, because maybe if the husband was going to pay spouse support instead – he's going to take on you know, the entire $30,000 credit card or something like that. And that makes sense to you. Why would you want $500 a month for three years when he's going to pay you know, what normally would be half, you know, splitting that credit card, that community property credit card, 15-15, he's going to take on the whole 30. You can make deals and bargains like that. Uh, I often say you, you don't want to feel like you w- are winning because if you're winning, somebody's losing. But you can win because maybe some things are going to be more important to you. Um, we had, uh, I, thinking back a few months ago, uh, we had clients where the mom, they, I think they had four children, and all she cared about is staying in the family home. She wanted to keep it consistent for the kids. She didn't want a big change. She didn't want to have to sell the house. And in order to do that, she waived her right in, in both the husband's pension and deferred compensation in 401k. And so she was basically walking away from, I would say, an additional fifty thousand dollars of of monies she could have gotten in the form of community property, but she was willing to forego that because if she wasn't going to do that, husband wanted to sell the house and, and get the proceeds from that, the the cash to be able to go and buy 
a new property because they didn't have any liquid assets because you know the pension money you can't use that and so forth. So that's what they ended up agreeing to. She kept the house. She's happy. Uh, he kept his pensions, and that was actually turned out to be important to him. He didn't want to have to divide those, and so that worked. So try and come up with a fair agreement that works for both of you, and that and that can even be tied back to the, the kids. Um, what's fair to you guys for the kids, or what's fair to the kids as well. Number five, seek professional guidance. What do you think? That's what I hear here for. That's what I do. Um, you know, consult with me. We don't give legal advice, but we can talk you through and how to how we get you through the divorce the divorce process um, in an amicable fashion. Um, you know, and there's lots of other resources out there for you if you guys need additional help. Again, you can use me. You can go to a mediator if you need additional help. You can um, get the advice of financial advisors. Uh, therapists, if you need to, we have clients that uh, come to us referred by therapists who basically in the discussions in the therapy determine, you know what, I think we've decided at the end of this therapy that we do need to do a divorce and they'll come over and they'll be amicable because they've talked through their issues and both mutually agreed that, you know, it's probably in their best interest that they file for divorce and not continue on in the marriage. So those are the five tips. Um, open and honest communication, consider mediation, focus on the best interest of the children, be fair and compromise and seek professional guidance. You know, the, you folks that are doing your own divorce, not only are you going through a divorce, obviously, but then you're having to deal with the nightmare of the legalese and the paperwork and the filing and the serving and the courts. I don't know why you do that to yourself. Just give me a call. At the end of the day, the amount of time you're going to spend missing work, going to court on gas, parking fees, um, doing your paperwork at home, doing whatever time that takes away from you with your kids or doing activities that you enjoy, that that is costing you real, not real dollars, but it's costing you um, money in your time being wasted. So definitely give us a call. I'd be happy to help. We had someone hire us on uh, a day ago, and the same day they hired me, I had their entire divorce finalized. We did this in two ways. We had a judgment reject rejected judgment case where they came to me and said tim we can't get it through can you help us finalize that they signed filed it approved the same day done and they've been working on this on their divorce for months another one was a new case super simple no assets no debts no kids less than 10 years marriage no alimony i did their initial filing i got that filed in five minutes had a case number finalized the remainder remainder of their paperwork they both e-signed all of that and i sent their settlement agreement out um, via uh, notary service, e-notary service, and they notarize their paperwork. They are literally done in one day, all their paperwork. And then all I have to, left to do is uh, file, uh, e-file the judgment after 30 days have passed after we file, and we usually get approvals in a couple of days with LA County. Again, all the other counties, we have to do it by mail. So remember that every divorce is unique and that these tips may need to be tailored to your specific circumstances. Emotions can run high during divorce. And then you're on top of that, you're going to add doing the paperwork. But by approaching the process with empathy, respect, and a commitment to finding common ground, you can increase the likelihood of a smoother and more amicable divorce, as well as using my service that will help you guys do all the grunt work of getting the procedural element of the divorce through. You guys just need to talk and discuss what those terms are. Make sure you kind of check your ego. Is that what I want to say? Make sure that you kind of put leave emotion at the door and as best you can turn this into a financial decision, um, like a business decision, not an, um, don't come from a place of emotion. If you come from a place of an emotion, you're upset because of maybe the reason you're getting divorced or what happened in the marriage, you got to put all that aside and just so you can make sane um, decisions. You don't want to make mistakes either because if you're emotionally charged, you might make mistakes in both directions. Maybe you're overly aggressive and you say things you shouldn't have said and you, you guys end, end up having attorneys. Or I've talked to people that were so upset on the consultation. They said, hey, I'm not, even if you begged me to take your case, I'm not going to do it today because I think you're not, you're not coming from a place of making rational decisions. Um, so try and treat it as a business decision. Try and keep emotion in check. And uh, that'll also help you keep from having to go to attorneys and and sticking with having an amicable divorce.